Hey everybody, Heather from Hooked on Pickin here. I've had a lot of questions on how exactly I use the Amazon Seller app on my phone. It's a free app if you're an Amazon seller to find and source my products. And so I'm gonna give you this quick tutorial on how exactly to use the app from your phone. So this is the app that I am talking about. It looks very different than the regular Amazon app because it has a black background and it's obviously called Amazon Seller, not the Amazon Shopping app, which looks like this. As you can see, this one has a shopping cart and it's got a white background. So the one we're looking for is the Amazon Seller app. Where do I find this app? Well, in the Play Store, of course. If you have an Android phone, you'll go to the Play Store. If you have an iPhone, you're gonna go to wherever you normally buy your um, applications. It's a free application, so it doesn't cost you any money, and you just download it, and I usually put it right on my home screen so it's easily accessible. Once you have your Amazon Seller app, you're gonna open it up and you'll have to sign in just like you would if you were signing into your Amazon account. So you're not able to actually use this app unless you have an Amazon Seller account because it links with your Amazon Seller account because there's a few things that I'm gonna talk about later in the video that are specific to you exactly and that's why it has to link just so that it can um, do the fees and let you know if you're restricted in other items. So when you click on this app and you open it up, this is normally the first screen that you see. So when you first open up the app, this is your home screen. If you um, are on a different part of the screen, you can always go up to the three lines in the upper left-hand corner and click home and it'll take you to this screen. In the upper left-hand corner, you see sales today so far. They'll usually be a dollar amount increment of what you have sold it for. The right next to that are units sold so far and you can go to that um, and look at that and see how many items have you actually sold just for them today. Um, if you scroll that bar over, you'll also see what is your payment going to be and on what date will it be deposited into your account. Usually that happens every two weeks, but you won't get your first payment until you actually have a positive balance in there. This is still the home screen, but I wanted to share a few other details about it. If you look at the middle of the page, it shows you product sales. I have mine set for the product sales for the month. If you go to that little gear over on the right-hand side of your screen, you can actually change it to yearly or monthly or daily or weekly. And so um, it just gives you a different bar graph view of how you're doing so far. As you can see, I'm up 101% since I... Uh, of my sales since last month, but I'm down 15% last year. So you can set that any way you would like in whatever view you like. Okay, now that we know what the basic screen looks like, I'm gonna talk about the details and how useful this tool is. The first line there, right underneath your bar graph, is going to be add a product. That's gonna be super important if you ever cannot find a barcode to scan because it gives you the option to type things in. I'll show you the next screen and it gives you an idea of what it looks like. Once you hit the add a product button, you'll be taken to this screen. There's lots of different things on the screen. I'm gonna move from bottom to top to just kind of discuss what's on here. Scan products are things that you've already scanned in the store and it's easy to find them again. History are things that you've previously scanned that you wanna find again and that you've clicked through all the options. And uh, when it comes to listings, sometimes I forget, okay, where did I find that listing and how much I was gonna pay for it? So history is a great thing. Favorites is also another option when trying to find another item again. In. and also you can click favorites and keep a record of the things that you like to look for in specific stores. Recommended products, hot new releases, movers and shakers, and top sellers are all options that you can look at to see if you can find different things to source and to sell. But the one that I use the most is right where it says search Amazon to sell up in there bar. You'll be able to put your cursor up there, type in what you want from the text box, and be able to search for your item that way even if you don't have a barcode. Okay, I've jumped back to the home screen and I'm gonna give you a flyby on what the rest of these things do. We've already discussed add a product and now we're gonna to go to manage orders. Manage orders is the place that you can see where things have sold and there's also a filter at the bottom of the screen where you can filter out the pending orders, which means the orders that haven't quite shipped yet and then the ones that have sold but already shipped. So that's a good um, place to go if you're looking for, yes, I know I sold five items, but I don't know what items. You can go there to find that out. Manage returns also gives you some good information. I don't often use that, but you can find out in, 
whenever an item gets returned or if you see your dollar amount go down, that's a good place to look. Communications will have a little blue number next to it if you have anybody who has sent you an email and it needs a response. Remember to always respond within 24 hours of getting a message. Inventory alerts are things that um, it just shares with you what's going on and um, whether or not you have too much inventory or not very much. And then pricing opportunities is another uh, tool to be used and I'll give you more detail about those two as well, the pricing opportunities and also the growth opportunities. Then there's manage inventory. This is a great place if you wanna change any pricing on your current inventory that you have in stock. And then if you're wondering when you send something into the warehouse, when is it there and are they unpacking it yet? Manage FBA shipments, you just click on that. It shows you all the shipments that you've sent in and how far along they are in the process of getting it unpacked for you. So I'm gonna go into detail on the pricing opportunity and the growth opportunities and show you some other screens that are involved with that. So here's what I see when I go to the pricing opportunities box. There's three different segments, compare to buy box, low price opportunities, and fee promotions. I don't often use the fee promotions, so I don't have much to say about that. You can just explore it on your own. Compare to buy box though, I do use frequently. Once you click on that, it'll show you all your products that currently are not at the buy box and do you wanna switch the pricing so that you're competitive in the buy box. And then the same thing with the low price opportunities. Low price opportunities still may mean you have the lowest price, but it's just suggesting, why don't you lower the price so that you can move your product faster because this particular item is not moving at the price you have it stated for. So those are great for repricing your items to get your product out the door and sold to people. So when I click the growth opportunities button, this is what popped up today. It's different every day, but these are things that Amazon says, we really, really want you to send these in. If you notice, they have really, really good sales ranks and usually you can make a good profit on it. If you have a specific category you're looking in, you can also go up to the search product opportunities box, type in like makeup or, um, you know, pet things, and it'll pop up those things that are growth opportunities that Amazon really does want you to send in. And so this is another option when sourcing and wondering what do I even look for? Okay, I'm gonna show you what the most important thing is that I use when I'm out in retail stores or other places trying to figure out how to use my app for the best ability. So up in the upper right hand corner, you see that camera. And that's the thing that I use to actually scan the things inside the store. The neat option about this camera is they don't just have a barcode scanner, you can actually scan pictures. So in the next screen, I'm gonna show you kind of what it looks like. When you open it up, it looks just like your camera, only it has um, little blue dots that basically are detecting the picture that you're trying to scan. So once you hit the camera button, you basically point it at whatever you're trying to scan and see those little blue dots in the picture? It's trying to decide what this picture actually is. And then once it does figure out what the picture is, it'll pop up the next screen that'll give you the, the product details. If it doesn't isn't able to, then it'll just keep trying until it is. So some things you can scan and some things you cannot, but this is a good tool to use. So once I've scanned it and it's popped up my product details, um, then it shows me this screen. Once it detects the proper picture, then it'll pop up exactly what it is. And then you'll have to click on the listing and then you'll see this. Now, there's a lot of details on this page, which I'll cover in my next video, but um, that's an easy way to use the camera. There's another way though, that if you don't wanna use the camera with the little blue dots, you can actually use the barcode scanner. The other way that you can scan items is when you're on already looking at a product and you just wanna to jump to scanning the, to the next thing, you'll see in the bottom left-hand corner this scan barcode picture. You can just click that and it brings you to the bar, uh, barcode scanner only. It does not bring you to the blue dot camera. You'll have to hit back a few times on your uh, phone to be able to get back to that one or go to your home screen. But this barcode scanner is really nice if sometimes you can't get the picture scanner to work properly. Once you hit the barcode scanner, you're gonna see this screen. Do you see it has the, the two green bars on it? All you have to do is get the barcode between those two green bars and it should be able to detect it. And sometimes when you can't get the picture scanner the other way to work, this one works well also. So that's basically a glimpse into the awesome tool of the Amazon Seller app. There are other apps out there you can use like Profit Bandit and things like that that will also help you out. 
Um, but this is just a small glimpse. Um, in my next video, I'm going to continue talking about the Amazon app, but I'm going to go over how do you know if it's restricted? How do you know if it's hazmat and you can't send it in? And how do you know if it's a slow moving ASIN? So I'm going to go over that. And I'm also going to go over all the details that I usually look at when I finally find the product and how do I know if it's even profitable. So stay tuned, watch part two, and hopefully that will help you out. And remember, in the end, Jesus wins.